Uh, what's going on, creative people? This is Creativity is an Idea podcast, a source of creativity for creative people. And I'm your host, Pyrick. I'm very happy and I want you to stay tuned because it's going to be a banger. It's all about creative people sharing their ideas, their challenges, their setbacks and changes that led to their growth. It's going to be amazing. And uh, stay tuned and see what happens. Creative person like you. What's going on, creative people? This is Creativity is an Idea podcast, a source of creativity for creative people. And today's guest is Mason Parker. Hello, hello, hello. Mason Parker. And please, pardon us, if you're watching, if you're listening, you can hear some background noise or sounds. We are actually in a restaurant, a French bakery, and you can hear plates and stuff. So forgive us. Shout out to Amelie's. Yeah, shout out to (laughs) Amelie's. Well, so Mason Parker, I do know he is a creative, an independent creative artist. And today he's here to share his challenges, his setbacks, certain things he had to do different in order for him to see progress. So stay tuned and it's going to be a banger. I'm your host, Pyrek, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So Jason, Mason, I was... (laughs) You know what's funny? Um, I have a god brother named Jason. And uh, that used to happen a lot. So. Yeah. I bet <laughs> no. you be called from afar. All you hear is sin. Jason, mm-hmm. Jason isn't me or yeah, Mason? Yeah, we would yeah. both come every time. Yeah. yeah. Either one of us was called. It, it, both of us would come. So. Yeah. It's all good. Plus, I've certainly been called worse. So it's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me for that. Uh, so Mason, tell me, dear Aman, who are you? Loaded question. Yeah. But, uh, I am, um, I'm a father, first and foremost, uh, of two, an eight and a Mm ten-year-old, boy and a girl, and uh, I'm a creative. Um, After that, uh, pure at heart, I just uh, am a a big kid as far as, you know, loving anything that allows me to uh, escape or express any medium whether it be acting whether it be uh film uh as far as being on you know the the production side of things Mm -hmm. um whether it be you know stage performance just in any any way of using art as an educational tool uh to to uplift and minister to people like that's that's what i'm all about so um secondly i am a creative um and then i guess after that uh, I'm, you know, a black man, uh, an American. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a whole lot of things that I'm pretty sure somebody out there can relate to at least two. <laughs> yeah, that is good. That is really good. So, earlier we were talking about your childhood, where you grew up and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, tell me, how was your childhood like? Uh... You know, it's funny. I I feel like it was normal, but sometimes when I talk to people, I realize that it wasn't necessarily all that normal. Uh-huh. It was it was uh, in, in a lot of different ways. It was very normal. Like I, I grew up in a you know lower middle middle lower middle class home. Um, you know, doing you know I, I had enough to feel like included. I didn't get like hell if I picked on at school and stuff like that for the things that I would wear or whatever. Um, But I also wasn't, like, you know, rocking all the latest either, you know. Um, I didn't get everything that I wanted, but I definitely uh, was well taken care of and loved and all that other stuff. Um, I started uh, creating very early as an outlet for early childhood uh, or early traumatic early childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, So I dealt with... uh, forms of child abuse not like from my parents or anything like that but uh when i was a kid and so that you know kind of translated into me wanting to express myself artistically Mm -hmm. so you know in some of my later work as i became an adult and become uh began to address those issues Mm -hmm. uh that stuff started to come out in my work and i started to use it as a tool to try to help other people you know through through their stuff but uh, outside of those experiences, my childhood was dope. You know, it was filled. It was filled with 
you know, Nick and Knight, and <laughs> you know, I was, I grew up on like Family Matters and Step by uh-huh. Step, and we still had like you know Saturday morning cartoons and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I think I was probably like the tail end of the last generation that actually had like Saturday morning cartoons, cartoons. and um, I think that's you know I, I I I'm from the blockbuster video generation, you know, mm-hmm. so. Like to me, that 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 just carries. Being a '90s kid carries like a certain nostalgia with it. Off top, I mean, I got the the Thanos Biggie oh, Smalls the Thanos, joint yeah. right here. That's you know? my guy right there. Exactly, you know. And so <laughs> I, and it's like the homage to Biggie. So it's like two in one. You know what I'm saying? So that's just that's just who I am. You know, I I, I love uh, I love everything. Um, you know, like pop culture stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I love that stuff. Uh, movies, film, everything. Yeah, that that is beautiful right there because whatever you learned when you were younger has sort of contributed to whatever you're doing now. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the case for, you know, pretty much anybody. You know, our upbringing is very much what molds us into the people that we become and yeah. the interests that we have going forward. So. Yeah. so throughout your life, from your childhood to now, is there anything that you think you would never forget? Good or bad? Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that I'll probably never forget. Uh, the thing that probably had the most impact on my on my uh, development, I guess you could say, is my my mother dying. Um, I mean, I. I think that is what would have the probably the most significant effect on damn near anybody, really. But for me, it was because my mom was the person that drove me to be an artist. Mm-hmm. You know, um, she was the, pro- the the parent that I lived with mm-hmm. all my life. Um, I, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother, and so she was an artist. She was a singer. You know, she was a creative. Every time I came home, almost, she would be, like, painting something or in the garage breaking down some kind of furniture or something like that and refinishing it and, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever she would be be doing. It was just just so awesome to, you know, always be around that. And I I guess I appreciate it more now that it's not here, of course, but uh, I can look back and see how that really, really made me who I am in that being at home for me mm-hmm. is being around other creatives and being around or in a creative space where we could just be like um there's a a, a, a guy here uh, who owns a theater company on Q Productions his name is Quinn Tally yeah. um, I don't know if you know him yeah I've heard of him yeah yeah so Carlos uh, Robson you've had him on the show um mm-hmm. Like, all of us come from the same collective uh, mm-hmm. of, of artists and poets and stuff like that. And we used to have this place called the Art House, mm-hmm. uh, where it's just a place where some of the poets live. But we would all kind of, like, commune there. You know, it was like the headquarters. Okay. And so, I when, I, when my mom was sick, uh-huh. you know, um, I basically lived there. Like, I didn't actually live there, but I was there enough, and I slept there enough you know, just to be constantly around that vibe, you know, and um, and yeah, man, it's 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 a, it's essential, it's yeah. essential. Because when you're around those creative people, you feel a sense of belonging. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Because um, that's home for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, being around that vibe, being around art, being around some some uh, creative energy, is just nurturing to me because that's how my mom was you know so um definitely when she when she passed away Uh you know not having that presence anymore you know it's really really significant so when your infrastructure pretty much crumbles Mm -hmm. you you have to kind of like figure out the world again you know what i'm saying and uh that's actually kind of how Paperback Hero Saga, the last project that I did, which I know we're going to talk about later, but uh-huh. um, that's actually kind of how that was birthed out of that healing process. And okay. I, yeah, you know, so it, it's been a very interesting journey, man. Yeah, I feel you on that. 
losing someone you do love can take a toll on you it's just sort of rechanneling it to a point you can achieve something right you reflect on it right yeah exactly. exactly it's really important so tell me mason when or how did you get the idea to do what you're doing now um well what i'm what i'm doing now is um uh, as i had kind of mentioned before is uh -huh. a uh an album slash comic book or should I say a comic book slash album I should uh -huh. say um, called the paperback hero saga uh, and basically it's uh, it's an allegorical tale uh, told through music uh, short film comic book and uh, spoken word of the individual's journey towards self-discovery so basically we follow a 13 year old boy named Malik uh, as he uh, is introduced to the knowledge of self uh, by his spiritual guide Toth, and uh, who's voiced by Boris Blues Rogers, um, another great uh, Charlotte-based artist, and um, and uh, he discovers that he is uh, his his genetic code and his his whole essence is connected to his 25,000-year-old uh, ancestor named Kahari. Okay. And um, Kahari, the God King, um, who is who exists in a place called the Jhana. Okay. Um, and the Jhana is basically like this utopian diasporic landscape. You know, if you just was to combine the most beautiful parts of every African country into one landscape, it would be the Jhana. The Jhana. Right? And it's like this uh, parallel uh, dimension that. Uh, Kahari existing and Kahari is voiced by Malcolm Jamal Warner um, and so I I came up with the characters Malik and Kahari in like 2012 mm -hmm. and that was two years after my mom died Okay. and um, it was basically just alright so there's I always say high level and low level thinking so like there's the deep reason mm -hmm. that we come up with stuff, and then there's the business logical savvy reason that you make it make sense for you to like do it and pursue it as a business endeavor, right? Uh -huh. So like the I, the high level idea was okay, I'm gonna do a story based on you know myself, okay, uh, because I want to turn myself into a superhero. The low level. Uh, I idea was okay from a marketing standpoint. It gives me more material to 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 market my music with, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I had got the a super the idea to just do a superhero. Um, I actually credit to my man Ra Razan Rain Sovereign, who I used to run with back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, he used to c call himself the Hood Superhero all the time, mm -hmm. and. Um, I came up with this idea to turn the group that the click of us to like this team of superheroes or whatever. Um, and then the, you know, we kind of disbanded or whatever. So I, I kept the, uh, I kept the, uh, the idea to do the superhero thing and I just did it with myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I say I came up with it in 2012 because I didn't actually like really execute it until 2014. Mm -hmm. And then even then, I hadn't come up with the whole story and all that other stuff. So um, it took from 2012 to 2017 mm -hmm. to really mold it and make it all that it became, you know. Okay. It takes a while for a seed to be nurtured. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, it definitely does. And and then not only that, like, I had to live life because it's based on my my journey and my you know lessons that i've learned and are learning you know so it's not like i'm some guru who's got it all figured it out and yeah. i'm now i'm now writing like this how-to manual like oh. nah it's like i'm i'm going through this as well so it's a it's a it's an up and down struggle for me but you know similar to the layman you mm -hmm. know i have a a heart to do the right thing and a heart to, for good things and to enrich my life and the life of the people around me, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to bring other people on that journey, you know, and be transparent about it yeah. so that they can 
be like, okay, it's okay if I ain't got it all figured out right now. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the principles are less active in my life. It just means that I got to keep going and keep, keep, going. keep, keep, keep pressing through you know yeah and it's all like you're sitting down and thinking and creating something of uh, fiction <laughs> right yeah you're right trying to live the life and write it down yeah exactly you know and i mean because you got to think like if you look at our culture um and i mean and even african culture i mean you're from ghana yeah like storytelling is just embedded in us you know yeah. and and storytelling with a purpose in order to educate is embedded in us so you know how we you know handed down our culture how we handed down our heritage how we uh instill certain life principles into our youth you know the most digestible way of programming people is through entertainment um and through bright flashing color you know colorful images and stuff like that but just think about how much you've learned about life from like batman you know or whatever. Yeah. So it's 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 really profound if you think about the cultural impact that comic books have had. You know, whether you say, "Oh, I'm not really into those or not." Like everybody knows Superman and Batman. Everyone knows the stories and the principles that those two characters represent. Mm -hmm. And and so we look to those figures and those archetypes as motivation and inspiration to show us who we who we can be. And uh, that's what I'm trying to provide with the provide. Paperback Hero Saga. That is excellent. So you started way around 2012, and you got it done, and you're now pushing it. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. I, I moved to L.A., got it done. I had a two-year plan to get it done. I uh, managed to get it done in about 10 months. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a blessing, man. It's been a, it's been a ride. Like, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Excuse me. I'm enjoying it. It's been exhausting, but, uh -huh. you know, it's also been just as rejuvenating as it has been exhausting, you know, yeah. uh, every step of the way. So, so Mason, there is this law, Newton's law. Yeah. And I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh-huh. And the law is, in order for something to go up, you have to let something down. So mm -hmm. tell me, Mason, what did you have to leave behind before you started seeing this progress you're seeing? Um, a lot of childish ways. Uh, I think it's somewhere in First Peter or something like that. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. You know, I thought as a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Something like that. Uh -huh. And um, that's true. You know what I mean? Uh, you just I looked at my life and I was like, yo, I can't. I can't allow myself to continue to be hung up by the same things that I've been being hung up by since I was like 12 or a teenager mm -hmm. or 20 something, you know, uh, early 20s. You know, like if I, you know, I felt like it, I, I, I forgot who it was from Wu-Tang, but they said that I think it might have been um, RZA or somebody. Um, but they were like, yo, if you repeat a year. If you seem, if it seems like you're going through the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. if you repeat a year, it's because you didn't. The universe is trying to get you to catch something that you keep missing, and you're gonna repeat that year. It's like the print, like you, you see, you ever seen Groundhog Day or anything like that? What it do? No, it's like, I haven't. What it do? There's, there's, there's plenty of movies where the, uh, the, the person is stuck in a day, and they're stuck in that day until they can get it right. You know, and that's that's pretty much what Groundhog Day is about. Bill Murray, classic movie. Check it out. Um, but that's pretty much what what life is. You know, is it's going to keep s sending you through those same lessons until you get it. You get so it, that yeah. it can you, so that you can be what God needs you to be mm -hmm. so that he you can carry out the mission that he got for you. you, got you know what I'm you. saying? So. Um, I had to like relieve a lot of like childish thinking um, behind. Um, I had to take responsibility and ownership of my own healing process. Uh -huh. um, I had to leave some people behind. Um, I think like the cliche thing to say is, yeah, I had to 
leave other people behind because I don't know for whatever reason we like to point at other people as a source for our stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah. if your life ain't if your life ain't shit, then pretty much the first thing you need to do is start with what you're doing to attract ain't shit people into your life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shit magnet. So, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's like I don't understand why people be talking about all these haters and all that. Nobody cares about you actually as much as you think they do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like there's not as many people like praying for your downfall as you might think yo you know what i'm saying there's actually probably a lot more people hoping that you get your shit together yeah than you might think you know and if you just kind of take a step back and be like well what am i okay yeah such and such hurt me or such and such they just they did something messed up by me but what did i contribute to putting myself in that situation you know what did i and not out of anger not out of like you know um not out of like not not being angry about it not like oh well if i never let my guard down and such and such and such but like truly like well perhaps i perhaps i moved a little bit too fast perhaps i da, 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 you know what i'm saying like really like reflect and and be introspective about it and really give thought to like the things that can make you a better person and and then act on them and that's i think what the 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 tipping point for me was is that I started to try to act on everything yeah and whether it was going to therapy whether it was uh creating boundaries in my life that I actually stuck to mm -hmm. uh, whether it was uh you know just choosing to um, distance myself from certain energies or be more stingy with my energy you know oh. because when you when you got dope energy People want to be around you, and people want that around, you know, people want that energy around, and you got to be choosy with how much of yourself you give to people, because people will suck you dry, you know what I'm <laughs> They'll saying? suck you dry. They will, they will, they will suck you dry, because they don't, they don't really care about you, they care about what they're getting from you, you know what I'm saying? They care. It's not that they love you, they love how you make them feel about themselves, and so you have to be aware of that, and you have to kind of like okay cool you know i'm always you got to be gracious about it and and be a blessing to people but also take care of yourself and put be be rightfully selfish you know what i'm saying yeah. like i gotta take care of me and i can't give you all the meals what i got left you know what i'm saying and that's that's what i had to learn that's what you had to that is i believe so many people out there can really resonate with what you're saying yeah yeah not kidding not kidding and people just to piggyback on what you were saying, you sure. said something about um, people oh, People are hating, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I tell you what, sometimes it's just our mindset that yeah. is hating on us. Yeah, and yeah. if someone out there online, miles away, is not in a direct contribution to your downfall. Right, right. It's then, like... They can they can say whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. It we, wouldn't bring you down in any way or any form. We give people too much power, and we don't respect our own. Is what it is, yeah. you know. And um, I think that I don't know. I, I think that our preoccupation with you know trivial and superficial things, like our attention span, has gotten a lot shorter, and it's gotten a lot more like radical like it takes something crazy to keep our attention now mm -hmm. you know so it's like people feed in the gossip and because we have so much access to it so it's like people feed in the like i think social media and it's like social media is definitely a great thing you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying don't get me wrong because i i depend on it for what i do but <clears throat> it's also giving us a false sense of validation and that like everything that we do matters as mm -hmm. far as like on the grand scheme of things like like someone's always looking at me that's how we feel you know and being and watched. It's, yeah somebody's you know, watching me and, and, and in a sense you're right uh -huh. but, <laughs> but but what i'm saying is is that like for example uh -huh. to w w that we've gotten to a point where you know we'll post like a 60 second selfie video of us listening to somebody else's music and not actually saying anything or adding any value to anybody else's life it's just look at me and you know let me yeah and, and you know whatever whatever and, and it's just got like we just our preoccupation with like the 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 vain and the superficial uh -huh. has kind of contributed to the bullshit for lack of a more like real eloquent term 
<clears throat> and I, I think that we all have to, myself included, you know, have to remind ourselves to not to not buy into the hype so much and not take ourselves so seriously. Mm -hmm. And um, and realize that and have private moments. Like allow yourself to have private moments and allow yourself to 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 remain two feet on the ground. And I think it'll help your perspective and not like constantly look for uh, people to be disrespecting you and stuff like that. Because I, I, I have what this thing that I call oblivious optimism. Oblivious optimism. Yes, sir. And what that means is that I'm so focused on what it, on making what I got going on work uh -huh. that I really like people have to point out to me when somebody is being disrespectful or somebody is throwing shade or whatever, because this is like, OK, you know, what I'm saying like it's, most of the time, <laughs> unless it's like really overt. You know, people have to be like, oh, I ain't like the way such and such was, I ain't, you know, talking to you or dealing with you. And I'm like, what you mean? Uh -huh. And they're like, yeah, yeah, they was doing, the, they was trying to be funny. And I was like, I don't know if they were trying to be funny or not, but it really doesn't matter. Yeah, cause, I feel you know what I'm saying? That. Like, either way, <laughs> Payback Hero Saga still drops in September. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I, I, at the end of the day, it's like, all that stuff don't, don't really matter. What only matters is is what we put, what we what we are trying to to do to uh, to really affect people's lives for the good. All that other stuff is just fuzz, you know. What yeah, I'm leave I feel it behind. That one too. Yeah. Leave it behind. People sometimes, I personally sometimes I need to take a personal self inventory mm. of what I've been doing mm. in the past and how I'm going to keep going forward. That yeah. is amazing, Mason. That is amazing, Mason. What a mind. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, so tell me, Mason. Was there anything stopping you? Did I even ask that question? Was there anything stopping you from doing what you are doing now? What no, do you, yeah, you didn't ask me that. Um, uh, money. <laughs> uh -huh. um, cash. Cash, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Like, it takes doing music and stuff it takes money to do that stuff it's expensive you know it's, and it's not like you can't crowdfund everything either you know what i mean <laughs> go like, fund not, me not a, like yeah it's 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 difficult to sometimes get people to see what you see in something until you're able to paint the picture for them mm -hmm. but it takes money to paint the picture so it's like you're in this conundrum as an artist where you're like constantly trying to find somebody else to buy into your vision, whether it be a patron, whether it be an investor or whatever. You're constantly trying to find somebody like, please believe in me, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And um, to find somebody that does is a blessing in any uh, capacity, whether it's like they share your post mm -hmm. or whether it's they are investing a million dollars in your project. You know what I'm saying? Like... From the top to the bottom, to find somebody that's willing to support you is 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 hard. Shoot, it's hard to get people to pick up a penny. You know what I mean? And <laughs> so I don't know. It's it's uh, besides money. I think balancing life, like this, the balance. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, I got two children. Mm -hmm. I don't have the money to actually adequately do anything that i'm trying to do uh -huh. whether it be be the type of father that i want to be or be the type of artist that i want to be mm -hmm. so i'm like constantly in, stuck in this like you know rat race almost you know trying to like get constantly that, like that, you know that, yeah. if, if you can like picture like a cook in a big kitchen with like four different stoves Go and he's the, like running the, around yeah. the kitchen like a madman trying to make it's sure everything burn. don't burn hey. uh, yeah, yeah exactly and it's like that was my life or is you know is my life to a certain extent um you know i have the 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 pleasure of being able to focus on my my craft full time at the moment but shoot even legends in the game got day jobs you know what i'm saying so <laughs> not seriously bro like it's a needed. lot of people don't realize like bum b teach college like is a professor at like houston university or something mm -hmm. like that i don't q-tip i believe is a curator at the schaumburg and like those are technically day jobs like somebody else is signing your check you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's 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 um 
it's something that you as I've gotten more mature, like I've realized like, yo, no matter what level you're on, you're always gonna be doing that dance. So you might as well just get really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um so as I've got I guess what I'm saying is as I've gotten more as I've become more successful and I've hit plateau after plateau in my uh-huh. career, I've realized that the equation don't change. You know what I'm saying? And um, I heard Denzel Washington say that comfortability is actually the artist or the creator's like worst enemy. Mm-hmm. It's getting complacent and getting comfortable. Like when Jeezy used to go perform, I mean, not perform, when uh, uh, Jeezy used to do an album or whatever, mm-hmm. um, he used to do it like in a home studio. You know, and a lot of artists do stuff like this. Like, you go back to the basics so that you can feel that that feeling that you felt when your ribs was touching, when you you know, when you was hungry, just fresh in the game. Yeah. Big said do every project like your first project. Every project like your first project. So that that mentality, like, yo, this is do or die, it never goes away. That's what keeps us going doing what we do the way we do it. If you once you that that leaves you, you probably need to stop doing it anyway. Yeah, you lose your momentum and you become wishy washy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess the the problems ain't really problems. They just part of the see. cycle, you know. Part yeah, of the cycle. cycle. Like, I've been around multi millionaires, and uh-huh. the question is always still, where's the money coming from? I want to do X, Y, and Z. All right, where the money coming from? <laughs> I got this much money. I I gotta go get some more money so I can do da 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 da. da you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like it don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, I think at certain point you feel good when you're able to achieve something, even when you saw issues. You need money, and you're wondering where it's gonna come from. Yeah. And look back. That was look back two months ago. Money was very hard, but now it's like okay, the project is done. Like right. Here. Right. And it's. At the end of it, everything works out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every I'm a firm believer in that. What's what's for you is for you, and the universe will make sure that you have it. Uh-huh. The only person who can mess that up is you. Uh-huh. And um, at the end of the day, you know, what I'm saying like it's 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 one of those things where just keep going, and you know, and this is a self talk too. I'm talking uh-huh. to myself. Like just keep going, uh-huh. and and you will get where you're supposed to be. And if you submit to, because um, I was raised in the church, so like Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, you know, mm-hmm. before I know the plans I have for you, and all that good stuff. And I believe that, you know, whatever, if if your will lines up with with God's will, God don't want nothing but good stuff for you, right? Mm-hmm. So if your will lines up with God's will for you, then wherever you end up is gonna be better than you could have imagined, mm-hmm. and your imagination only puts a limit on what God is actually trying to do for you because he's smarter than you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you just submit to like, all right, let me stop praying for what I want and start praying for let me line up with what you want for me, now we cracking. You know what I'm saying? So. And it sort of takes some stress off your shoulders. Yeah. And there's this um, statement in Psalm 146 or 147. Anybody listening or watching, you can check it out. It says something like, uh, put your trust in God, not to man. Because the day the man pa- uh, passes away, all his plans perishes. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, so, I feel you on, on that and, one. And th- now, and, th- and let me kind of clarify too. Like, I believe you have the dreams that you have and you have the desires of your heart for a reason. Like, they weren't put inside you mm-hmm. just arbitrarily. You know what I'm saying? So... The passions that you have, the desires that you you have, as long as those things are, as long as those things are of God, and mm-hmm. when I say of God, I mean like they're positive, they're they're about enriching people, other people's lives, and the mm-hmm. life of yourself and those that you love, stuff like that. As long as they line up with things that are godly, then there's no reason why you sh- the universe would not want you to I have you that. To have you know what I'm saying? And so if that is the case then you need to submit to maybe having those things or my path to having those things won't look the way that I thought it would look. Like, if you had to ask me, like, 20 years ago, you know, because I've been doing this for since I was four. So, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Like, if you were to ask me, 
20 years ago, yo, how you think your career is going to be? I told you I was going to be signed by like 22, uh-huh. you know, if not b- before that, you know. Mm-hmm. But what's funny, though, is that at the, when I was 22 and, you know, that was the, the, the game was in a whole different place. Yeah. Than it was when I was like coming up on hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Like in the nineties, like cats was still getting signed based off the fact that they could rap well. You know what I'm saying? And you actually still wanted to get signed. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? To it like the labels were still like the as far as people were concerned, the only way to enter the industry. Now it's like as an indie, you can do anything a label could do as long as you got the bread. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of those things where you just gotta like realize that he knows the 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 plan is already there the end has already been been seen you know Mm -hmm. especially if you're dealing with a a deity that lives outside of time and space if he's truly omniscient and omnipotent and all that other stuff if you really say you trust god then you know you got to realize that yo i don't know what the hell i'm talking about let me just (laughs) chill (laughs) yeah i feel you so mason at this point, I'm going to ask you this, and this is the main, so, the core, the core of this show, and that is, what is your source of creativity? Um, I think life and all of its many facets. I know that's kind of like cliche to say as an artist, like, oh, what inspires you, life? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it, that's true, though. Like, I, 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 movies. I will say that movies. Because I'm an escapist, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I like to get out of my reality and into someone else's sometimes. Mm-hmm. I like to, I'm a storyteller, so I like hearing stories. And I like getting taught by stories and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think those things are the, the biggest thing. Like, when I'm one of, when I was doing Paperback Hero Saga, uh-huh. I studied Star Wars, I studied, you know, H.G. Wells, I studied uh, just anything that had a, a series or a trilogy or, you know, just anything that had an arc, you know, I studied it all, you know, okay. and I got inspiration from every single thing that I looked at, you know, from Netflix to web series to animated series to movies, you know, I just, I really, really, really dug in. So I think that, like, the reason why movies and certain things and uh, my uh, movies and uh, pl- theater and stuff like that, I think the, one of the reasons why those other creative works are so uh, inspiring to me is because they're like snapshots of other people's experiences and stuff like that. So it's like I literally get to do like a rapid fire humanity study almost, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And, um, I don't know. It's like a, it, it literally be like a sensory overload, like a complete like, poof, and then I, and then that translates into what I then put out or create. Okay. Know? That is good. That is so good. So I want to know, tell me this. I, I, I was going to ask you a question, but I'll, I'll put it aside for the moment <laughs> and ask you about your industry right now. Uh huh. What do you? What are your views? Um, it's changing. I tell you that. Uh-huh. Um, it's a moving target. Anytime you're trying to hit a moving target, you <laughs> want to aim at where it's going and not where it's at. Uh-huh. So, um, you need to be looking at. And, and the thing is, is that I don't think a lot of people. I don't think. I think it's an art to being able to look at any industry mm-hmm. and be like, "That's where it's headed. I'm gonna do that." Yeah. And um like I saw, you know, like 2012 was way before Black Panther, you know? Uh, yeah. So people be like I I dropped my the first uh short film to Paperback Hero the Tuesday after Black Panther came out. And people be like, "Well, did you know that that was coming?" I'm like, "Yeah, I knew exactly <laughs> what I was doing with that." You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I think it's it's one of those things where you 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 really have to not chase a sound not chase 
what you think the formula is because some a and r is telling you that that's whatever you know what i'm saying you really have to get the pulse of the people what you have to understand is once you get been in the game for a minute you start to to sight or you start to see how certain middlemen are unnecessary certain industry gatekeepers or self-proclaimed industry gatekeepers are not actually factors once you get past a certain point you know what i'm saying and once you get past that point you realize that all they're doing is looking back at the people Mm -hmm. to see what the people are rocking with yeah and then that's going you know they're they're it's capitalism at its best you know what i'm saying (laughs) like it's that's what we do we need it yeah exactly so once you figure that out it's like and and once you realize that technology has given you the means to go directly to the people all you need is the bread the bread all you need is the money and the reason actually you don't even need the money necessarily you know what i'm saying you just need to crack to crack the code of giving people what they want they want you know what i'm saying and if you see this is where it's at and this is where it's going you you can do that I think you could do that successfully. And I think um, depending on what you're trying to do in the industry, you know, um, I, I, I think that showing people, keep being ahead of your time, man. Somebody's going to catch up to you. Yeah. I guess that if I could say it in a nutshell, that's what I would say. Keep being ahead of your time and eventually someone's going to catch up to you, yo. You know, just keep shining. That, that is really good. Even every movie out there, the movie that we really want, really enjoy watching, they are all ahead of us. Yeah. Then we're like, whoa, okay, then we're waiting for the next one. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah, keep keep being ahead of your time. People will catch up to you. That's right. So now that you've answered that question, day in, day out, let me ask you this. Someone out there is going to hear something which they will be able to extract something from and help shorten their time frame in achieving whatever they want in the creative industry. Right. Tell me, day in, day out, what have you been doing that is helping you see progress? Um, I, I just do something every day, for one thing. I, I have, I'm obsessive. I, I don't encourage people to do that. Hey, it's probably good, though. It's good. Be obsessed. <laughs> But to me, it's like I, I feel like that's a true test of if if you really actually want this, uh-huh. you know, whatever it is that you say that you want. I wake up thinking about this, and and not just thinking about it. I wake up doing stuff. I'm sending. I'm I'm literally rolling over, sending emails from my phone, making to do lists, making notes, writing rhymes, whatever it may be. Whether it be the business side, or the creative side, you know. I'm always doing something. If I'm not doing the creative part, I'm doing the business part. If not the business part, the creative part. Like, it it never stops. Never stops. The store absolutely never closes. I do business to the wee hours of the morning. Somebody can call me from the West Coast at 3 o'clock a.m., shorty not tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's because the people close to you will understand. You know what I'm saying? Look, like. This is a great, and they may not understand, but you know, eventually you'll find your tribe and they will understand. But um, it don't stop, it just does not stop. And you, you can't be like, oh, yo, it's too late, or I don't like you. You, I'm trying to tell you, Einstein once said that if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your day life. In your but life. this, every once in a while, I'm not gonna lie to you, that even doing something that you love, there's aspects of it that feel like work. Mm-hmm. Because it's th- certain, like for example, yeah. like <laughs> there's days that I would much rather go to the movies instead of doing a video shoot. I promise you, as as illustrious as like, oh yeah, we doing a video shoot, and like to somebody who hasn't necessarily been a, able to do like a whole lot of video mm-hmm. shoots, that may be like, oh yeah, dang, you know. But um, for for me or for someone who has like gotten to that point in their career where that's not necessarily. Uh, what it's not i'm not gonna say it's not exciting anymore but it's it's not like it's a part of the job yeah. it's, it's not like yeah so you some know, days we're doing want to escape some, like yeah some days it's like yo i really want to do this video shoot you know what i'm saying because i'm excited about the song i'm excited about the idea and all that other stuff and then you get to the day of and it's like yo <laughs> this is a three-day shoot 
and it was day three now, and I'm ready to be done with this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I've been, I can't tell you how many times I've done a play run uh-huh. that's been like a month or two months or three months long. Like, I'm telling you, you ne- uh, you never experience life till you literally said the same words every day for 90 <laughs> days straight bro like it's crazy uh. <laughs> so there's aspects of it that do feel like work but you know what i'm saying at the end of the day you know you appreciate uh the the, the opportunity to to do what you love and everything yeah you know? that is good so mason at this point we are going to gossip <laughs> so if you're watching you can choose to not watch if you're listening yeah, it's a private conversation now so let's <laughs> gossip is there anything public figure public issue global issue um per, a person you want to vent at you want to whine at you want to say fuck you you want to say this you want to compliment um. or you want to Anything out there you want to say? I do because I'm all about spreading the love vibration. Um, uh-huh. I will say congratulations, baby, to uh, Cardi B and Offset. Um, I actually met the Migos in um, in the Atlanta airport, and they were like really cool. Actually, uh-huh. like we were at the same, we were on the same flight to New York together, and they showed me a lot of love, man. And um, that was before the whole Cardi B Offset thing. Uh-huh. And um, so when that happened, I, I, I looked at it with a certain level of interest or whatever. And it's just been really dope to see both of them really, like, treating each other good and, and being happy publicly and, uh-huh. and, and just not letting it, not, not you know, just letting it all hang out, man. I like that. Like, that's dope. And congratulations on the baby. And I really think that that baby is going to make Cardi B's glow up. Like uh-huh. she, her, her glow up about to level a whole nother level up, bro. Like the reason I say that is because when you embrace parenthood, like I think she probably will, uh-huh. it it just it's gonna force her to it's gonna force her to elevate her thinking on a level that Do she ain't so many I'm, things I'm, on a high I'm level. I'm telling you, bro. Like and so her her Different music is gone. I'm telling you. So the uh, what I think is gonna happen uh-huh. is the growth that everybody was looking to see from Nicki Minaj mm-hmm. that hasn't happened and probably <laughs> never will happen just to keep it funky um, is is gonna be Cardi. I think Cardi's gonna give us that kind of Mary J. Blige type step by step growth you know what I'm saying. I, I compare her she like, she like uh, in my opinion reminds me of a lot of what we liked about Mary, how real she was, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think, yeah, I think Cardi going to be all right, man. I think Cardi going to oh, be I'll all say, right. Just to make um, a connection, Beyonce, but a crazy version of Beyonce. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a like crazy an extra version. hood version of yeah. you know, Beyonce. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And like she's definitely, like, as a person who spent a significant part of his life in the tri-state area she is yeah. definitely a chick from the bronx like you know yeah. what i'm saying so um <laughs> or a type of chick from the bronx so i don't mean to generalize all y'all <laughs> <laughs> wow. but yeah now nah, she's like I, she's very down to earth i think that's what people like about her and um i uh i don't think that like i want my daughter to be a cardi b that's uh-huh. not what i mean but I think that Cardi B, the thing that we like about Cardi B is that Cardi B knows that. You know what I'm saying? So now that Cardi B got a kid, uh-huh. I think she's going to be like, yo, I need to, I need to, I'm, I'm an example for her. So uh, I need yep. to, da 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 da. I'm, I'm telling you, yo, it's going to be a very interesting glow up, man. I'm telling yeah. you, I'm excited. It's so funny. It's how things are going to turn. It's going to be amazing. I can see that. Because once they have a kid, Things start to change yeah, in the man. way what they do, what they say. Yeah, man. They'll be very, very careful. Yeah. Not black China, but you know, not, not black China. No, no, uh, nah, no, nah, no, 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 no. I had to say that on the site. Yeah, you know, no names dropping, but yeah, anyway. yeah, we don't claim her. And um, <laughs> tell me, so uh, earlier you were talking about a housing issue, the housing project. Is this oh, something you want yeah, to yeah. make reference to? I'm, there's a housing epidemic, man. A lot of people don't. A lot of people think that affordable housing. Is like just an issue where they live until they go somewhere else and realize like like every everybody is trying to figure out how to pay rent right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the rent has gone up across the nation. You know, um, it's just very difficult for lower income to middle income families 
to find affordable housing. Um, and I just think that that's something that really needs to be pushed more to the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily have any, <laughs> like, solution to it or anything like that i'm a i've been a victim of it you know what i'm saying if anything like i and i and from going like i think what made me more alarmed about it is that i went f clear across the country i went from charlotte to la uh -huh. and it was it was the same shit the you same. know what i'm saying like except worse because the car the cost of living is crazy higher right. i was paying like not to put all my business out but shoot i ain't even there no more so I, I, at one point, I was paying a G a month for a room, like a room in an apartment. <laughs> uh, I had a parking space, but I didn't have a car, so it didn't <laughs> even matter. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, uh, it, it was just crazy. And that was that was in L.A. And I was in the Valley. I wasn't even in L.A., L.A. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's that was crazy. And then, but you're coming from Charlotte where... You can't. It's it's hard. You hard pressed to get a job that that pay you anywhere close to twenty dollars an hour. Oh, like you you hard pressed. Like if you especially don't have like a degree or something uh -huh. like that, yo, you going. It's gonna be difficult. And this unless you're working like, you know, some manual labor, like uh, I'm gonna say, you know, like third shift type, you know, or, or like a. A certified type factories are like you got like the forklift or something mm -hmm. like that it's gonna be real hard for you to find something that's gonna really like make you any type of comfortable like it's not designed to make you comfortable at all or for you to comfortably be able to pay your bills and actually like have any type of life okay. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so um i think that part of me is is just like looking at is looking at the, the true housing epidemic and then part of me is looking at just the way our society is structured and how it's designed to keep you coming back to coming like back. the paycheck is a hey. leash that keeps you attached to that job because it's like we're gonna pay you just enough to keep you <laughs> coming kind of broke uh -huh. but not really <laughs> you know what i'm saying you gotta come back to this motherfucker. Yeah, i had to just um <laughs> they said the the bit all you see on tv on in the movies la oh this 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 Nice and stuff, but the belly, the belly of LA, you gotta be <laughs> the real rich LA. or yeah. broke. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, be there. yeah. If Homeless you're not making, to be if there. you're not making, I'm gonna say, 150 to 200 thousand dollars in LA a year, you, you, you not really. Hell, yeah, you probably got a roommate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably got a roommate. <laughs> Real talk, you know what I'm saying? And shoot, you might have one even if you are making two hundred thousand dollars a year, depending on where you live at. But like, that's one thing that you and they, that's the thing. Like, if you lived in LA before, if you live in LA now, you listen to this, you feel me? Because you probably got a roommate now. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody got a roommate, or they live with their peoples. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole like you 18, so you got to move out thing. That's like a East Coast thing, bro. Like I didn't even realize that until so I left out. I, I moved out there. I mean, like family stay together, bro, because the housing is crazy. Yeah, I'm staying, mom. Yeah, I'm yeah. 25, I mean, I'm still staying. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like the whole like that's why the college uh, culture is different out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's 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 interesting, bro. What's up? Yeah, I feel on that. Mom, the meatloaf, if you watch yeah, that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you go steady and still stay with the mom. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, that is really good. Something which, um, you know, sometimes we can talk about it. We may not be on the drawing board to, like, draw or map out a solution for the whole housing project. All right. we can do is voice it out for people to be aware of it so that in due time. Right. They'll right. do something about it because right. it's hurting everybody. It's hurting us, us really much, yeah, a lot, a lot. Right. Um, I'm thinking of moving to, oh yeah, Cali, right. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's scary. It's scary sometimes. People are like, oh, it's hey, very man. expensive. You know, it's very like it, just have a plan. I mean, people move to Cali every day. I mean, people move back every day. Like, and the thing is, like, it's, there's no shame in either one. Like, it's 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 just a part of. I don't feel like, L LA. From living in LA, like, and I'm just—I'm not talking about Cali. I'm just talking about LA. LA. Like, unless you have a reason to go, you're just out there. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when I say reason to go, like, L.A. is a media hub. It's a... If you in entertainment, if you in media, if you in broadcasting, if you whatever, model or whatever, dancer, whatever, definitely, by all means, go out there, have a plan, you know, try to make it work. But, you know, if you just like, oh, I just want to move to L.A., then, you know, <laughs> you can have a plan, you can make it work. I mean, there's doctors, there's lawyers, there's, there's plumbers, there's definitely, like, just normal people that live in L.A. Mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But... Don't just like I said, have a plan. Don't just go out there and just be out there. Like, yeah, oh, I'm in LA now I'm in LA. because you want to live in LA. LA. Like, don't I hate that. Don't don't be go attached to plan. just living in a place because so so you can say that you live in a place. That's crazy. If you if you ain't got no reason to go, then find you know stay ass where you at or mm-hmm. you know figure out where you're supposed to be and go there. Yeah, and uh, sorry talking about too. We are talking too much about places, but let me uh, put this in. Nevada, Henderson in Nevada. That will be a place I'll probably settle down. But it's not really. I heard it's not. It doesn't have a lot of creative people here and there. So like Las Vegas do. Vegas do, which is like thirty minutes away from it. So that oh, yeah. is where I'll probably stay instead of going to Cali. <laughs> a lot of yo, a lot of us uh-huh. going to Vegas right now. Uh-huh. A lot of people going to Vegas right now too. I don't know why, but. There's a lot of people going to Vegas. Wow. Football teams is going to Vegas. Like everybody's going to Vegas right now, dude. It's it's lit right now. I don't yeah. know why, but hey, more power to you, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna go there in August. Yeah, yeah, check yeah, it out for man. a business issue. Anyway, a without, um, we're about to wrap up. And if you're listening, this is Creativity is an Idea podcast, and today's guest is Mason Parker, and he is a creative, an independent creative artist. So at this point we are about we are about to wrap up. I'm, I want to ask you, if there was there was something you wish you would have knew, or you wish you would have known when you were younger, what would it have been? Like when you were starting, what you're doing now? It's all a lie. A lot. Adulthood. Mm-hmm. Don't believe them. Just stay where you're at. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't come up here. <laughs> they don't have cookies. <laughs> Oh my God, nah, man. And the bills don't ever stop. They don't ever stop. I, like, but seriously, like, enjoy your journey. Enjoy where you're at in your journey, and um, appreciate where you are. You know, mm-hmm. just like J Cole said, "Love yours." Love yours. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm learning to do that. And the more that I'm learning to do that, the better my life has become. So, mm-hmm. well, at this point, tell me, uh, Mason. And if you're watching, you can hear what he is saying. And tell me, what are you up to now? Like, me? what projects you got going on? Um, Where they can find you? Okay, you yeah. Can, your house number, everything. Like, hey, <laughs> I'm here, Parker. Right, just right. Park my That's car outside. My social. <laughs> nah, oh. So, uh, I am Mason Parker. dot com. Mm-hmm. I am. Mason Parker. Make sure you get both of the M's. I am Mason Parker dot com. And that's in on everything. I am Mason Parker. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I am Mason Parker dot com. All right. So I'm going to check it out. Also on Instagram, I need you to follow FJP bars on Instagram. I am. I play the lead of uh, uh, John Q. Um, in a new web series, a new interactive web series called Bars, which by interactive we mean... I saw you on that one. Word, yeah. all right? So, yeah, by interactive, it's really dope. Um, you guys choose what happens next in the story. Wow. So at the end of each episode, the audience will decide, does John Q stay at the battle? Does he go to work? Uh, does, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, but the 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 thing to remember is that it's all in y'all hands, and so that drops in September. It's called Bars. Make sure you follow them on uh, Instagram, um, FJP Bars, and then also um, I'm in a movie called A Social Love Affair uh, by Michael Foster. Shout out to uh, Foster. Um, that comes out in September as well, and uh, I'm working on the uh, next uh, EP and the sequel to Paperback Hero. Um, just working, man. Just working, 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 working. Yes, sir. Producing, creating. That's right. You know. That's right. That is really amazing, Mason. Oh, Mason, <laughs> Mason. <laughs> yeah, that's really amazing. And by the way, if you're watching, if you're listening, 
Um, I will put everything he said in the description. If you're on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, or YouTube, you can check the description and you'll find a link to whatever he said here. Yes, subscribe and to me on everything. Subscribe, please. We want you to subscribe. Do it. Do it now. Or and else. wait, that's not all. <laughs> hey, <come and> show. <laughs> right, right, anyway, right. With so, your subscription. <laughs> nah. It was a pleasure. Uh, this is Creativity. It's an idea podcast, a source of creativity for creative people. And I am your host, Pyrick. And today's guest was or is Mason, Mason Parker, your Parker. favorite friendly neighborhood poet MC, baby. <laughs> that's that 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 was a banger. So stay tuned for the next episode. This will be.